Probably the most boring game there is, and uh, please do not uh, uh, rush me after service and beat me up. Don't slash my tires or anything like that. But uh, the most boring game that there is is the game of chess. Uh, I, I played on the chess team in high school. I, uh, not that I was that much of a thinker, but uh, I, I, I was a basketball player, but we, we didn't uh, dress out in sports and play sports. And uh, so my dad let me be on the chess team. <laughs> and uh, I, I won every match that I ever went to, uh, which I went to all of them. I won every tournament. Um, there were five people on our team. I was the fifth man. Most teams only had four people. And so I won by way of forfeit. I'll take it any way I can get it. A win's a win's a win's a win. And uh, I'm sure other people are thinking about that, other, that today also. But players strategize several moves in advance, taking extra caution to make sure the next move is the correct move. If you're one on the losing side, it's not comfortable when the uh, opponent takes your king, lays it over and says, uh, checkmate. That means it's done, it's over, there's nothing you can do and you have been backed into a corner, and you might as well turn around and walk away. I want to preach to you just for a few moments today on the subject, the king always has another move. The king always has another move. How do we describe God who is invisible, immutable, everlasting, all, uh, eternal, all-wise, all-knowing? Because all we have to describe him is language. We have this English language. We have the Spanish language. We, all we have to use is uh, metaphors and weak similes and comparisons. And Because God said, my ways are high above your ways. My thoughts are above your thoughts. Uh, it's, uh, it's impossible to comprehend uh, that the God of the universe would step out on the balcony of time and say, let there be and there was. It's hard to believe and to understand how he could just speak and things happen. You see, because our ways are certain structures, we are certain structured, and I, our ways are, this is how it's supposed to be. There are some people in this building today that probably say, I shouldn't be where I'm at this time of my life, but here we are, what do we do with today? How do we go forward from here? I'm here to declare that God is going to pull you out of your situation Hallelujah. I'm here to declare that God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think. What? According to the power that worketh in us. We like to quote that scripture and it's all good and sounds great, but we forget the power that worketh in us. That, and you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Amen. Only God knows how to get out of us what he put inside of us. He, he's put visions and dreams inside of you. And the Lord has, has spoken to me about some of the, the people that were up here earlier. And I, I, I'm, I'm trying my best. God, let us walk down the path today and, and let me not get out of, out of kelter. But I, I feel like I've got something to say to this congregation that Satan is not a creator. He's simply an imitator. Sometimes you're going to think that why? How does he, how is he able to do that? He can not create one thing. He is under subjection to you and to, I, to me. He is under subjection to us and I will take authority over that. Hallelujah. Because it is, it's not about who I am. It's all about who he is. And, and he's trying to create something in me. And David said, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not from your presence. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. It's the king always has another move. The king always has another way to go. You see, the devil, he's a fake, he's a fraud, he's a phony. And, and the more you grow in God and the more you seek after God, the more you're going to have, a ta have attacks and have, have uh, I, I used to say, new levels, new devils. Hello? If the devil's fighting it, you need to get up and shout a little bit. You need to click your heels together, not because you're going to go back to Kansas. You just need to say, I'm glad that God is on my side. Some of you in this house, you shouldn't even be here today, but God is on your side. God has not forgotten you. God has blessed you, and you are in the house of God because of his blessings. 
I, 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 I'm fixing to preach up in here. Listen, here's the problem, is that we come to the fiery furnace. The Bible says, and, uh, and, and Nebuchadnezzar said, look, turn up the fire. What? Seven times hotter than it's ever been before. The Bible says that, and so it got so hot that the mighty men fell dead at the doorstep. If you're in the fire, you need to thank God that you're in the fire. That means you didn't die at the doorstep, that you're in the middle of this thing. Because if you're in the middle of the fire, that means you're not alone. That means that God is with you. Come on, the king always has another move. The king always knows what he's doing. Hallelujah, Lord, how are they increased which trouble me? Many there be which say of my soul, there is no help for him in God. Selah, but thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory and the lifter of my head. I will not be afraid. Somebody hear me today. I will not be afraid of 10,000s that have set themselves against me round about. Arise, O Lord. It's the word of God. The king always has another move. God is always good at getting people out of trouble. Ask blind Bartimaeus. Ask the the ten lepers. Ask the demon possessed. He's good at getting people out of problems. But all I've got to do is wait on the Lord. We used to say, well, why don't you just fold your arms? No, why don't you serve the Lord with gladness? Come before his presence with singing. Know ye not that the Lord, he is God. Somebody hear me today that the king always has another move. There's a strategy that if we walk with God and we'll walk in the Spirit, being in front of, being in the middle of His presence is going to put us in front of our destiny. I, I, I know that word is thrown around a whole lot in a, in a very abusive way, but just walk into your destiny. Ladies and gentlemen, you're not going to walk into your destiny. You're going to run into your destiny. I, I believe that we're going to have to go so aggressively after it in this day and time. We are getting closer than ever before to the coming of the Lord. And so I'm going to go after my destiny like I have never gone after anything else in my life. Why? Because the king knows how. The king always has another move. Exodus chapter 4 that I read to you earlier, or the book of Exodus chapter 1. The, the children of Israel were in bondage and everything was just going horrible for them. And, and all of a sudden uh, in, in Exodus Exodus chapter 4, uh, the Lord told Moses, he said, I want you to go back there to him, and, and here's what I want you to do. He said, I want you to throw down the rod in and, and verse number 3, and it turns to a serpent, and he said, I want you to put your hand in your coat, and he pulled out of hand, his hand, and it was leprous, and, and chapter 8, frogs come into Egypt, and Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and, and as verse 16, the lice swarm and are come in, and Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and there's all, the king always has another move. There's a strategy with God. Everything Thing we do, there's a strategy with God. He is not just something to letting this world uh, go to pot, if you will. There's a strategy with him. He knows what he's doing. He's in control. Oh, somebody's got to hear me today. The cattle of the Egyptians, chapter 9, the cattle of the Egyptians were, uh, died, but not one of the Israelites died. The plagues come, the boils come, uh, the hail comes, locusts, darkness, the firstborn is slain. And final, finally, Pharaoh says, I've had enough of this, let the children go. Let me tell you, sometimes God will not go against the will of man. He has given you free choice. But sometimes he will make you so miserable. You say, I've got to get out of this situation. And he will turn that around. I'm telling somebody, the king always has another move. He knows where he's going. He knows what to do with you. He knows how to get out of you what he put inside of you. Yeah, we know the Israelites left and, and uh, they walked through on dry ground. But you see, struggles never take God by surprise. But you've got to be na- radical. Naaman, go wash yourself in the Jordan. I don't want to go do that. I, that's dirty water. So... It's not up to you to question how he does it. It's just up to us to understand and obey what he says to do. <laughs> Samson, you're going to kill some Philistines. Cool, what kind of gun are you going to give me? I'm not going to, get a gu- I'm not going to give you a gun. See that jawbone down there? Pick it up. Listen. When God has put something in your hand, then God will take control of that and God will use it according to his purpose. Watch, what, watch this. Samson is going down in the book of Judges. Samson is going down to find a daughter in Timnath. In, uh, uh, he, as he's going down there, a lion. I, I'm going somewhere with this. I, I know where I'm going. So, uh, I'm, uh, He's going down to find a daughter in Timnath. He's going to find a wife. And as he's going down there, all of a sudden, a lion comes out. The Bible says he rented. He, he tore it apart. Two verses later, he's on his way back. 
And the Bible says that he was tired, he was weary. Everything was just, he, he, was, he was just tired. And uh, the Bible says, and the Lord spoke to me and said, reach over there in the jawbone, uh, reach over the jaw. Uh, according to scholars, it is the same lion that he had killed earlier. Sometimes what we think is meant to kill us was simply sent to feed us. You see, I, I, we, we, God, God, what are you doing in the middle of this? I know exactly where I'm going. I know exactly what is going on because the king always has another move. Uh, two years, uh, about two years ago, uh, this month, um, January of uh, 2014, um, we were getting ready to go to the Philippines to, uh, to preach. I was raised in the Philippines. My wife was raised in Hong Kong, missionary kids. And uh, we were getting ready to go back overseas and, uh, for, uh, to preach some youth camps in the month of April. My wife said, uh, babe, I haven't seen a doctor in six years. And I said, well, we've, you know, we've been traveling and uh, you just don't carry a doctor with you, you know. And, and I said, uh, go ahead and just make some appointments. We were in Houston and she uh, made some appointments to uh, go have uh, a checkup and the uh, doctor looked at her and she said, uh, when's the last time you had a mammogram? My wife said, I've never had one. She said, I'm sending you downstairs right now. So they did a mammogram and three days later they called my wife back and they said, we found something and uh, we'd like for you to come back in for some more testing. When uh, those things happen, you kind of get a little nervous. Uh, those, if you've ever gone through anything like that, you kind of get, you just get a little anxious. So we went back and they they said they did 20 some odd more tests and, and pictures and um, she uh, they, they, they scheduled to do an MRI and, and uh, a biopsy and all that kind of stuff. But in the middle of that, I was driving to, uh, to from Houston over to uh, Mississippi to preach and the Lord spoke to me. I'm driving down the road and I'm crying. I'm just having a good old time with me and Jesus. And uh, the Lord, I said, now, Lord, I said, I, I don't know what you're doing. And uh, I said, but I trust you completely, God. I said, it's all in your hands. I said, I'm not going to worry about this. And I said, God, I'm asking you to help us. And something settled in my spirit. And the Lord spoke to me. If he has ever spoken to me in my life, he said, everything is going to be okay. I've got it all under control. And my spirit settled. You see, our problem is, is that we have got to have things settled in our spirit. If we question who he is and does he have the power, I believe there's going to be a release of the power of the Holy Ghost in the next few moments. But we have got to have our spirits settled and know that he is God. It is he that made us and not we ourselves. Help me. Come on. You, do, do, am, I, am I making sense at all this morning? That God knows the king always has another move. We, uh, we went back in. They did a, uh, an MRI. They did a biopsy and... And uh, my wife was headed up to see her dad, and uh, he was in the hospital, not doing well. And on the way to the airport, we stopped by the doctor's office, and they said, we sent the test off to MD Anderson. And she said, is that normal? And they said, no, that's not normal. So my wife gets up there. She's with her dad for a couple of days, and, and, uh, and, and mom and dad in the hospital. And it gets a phone call from the doctor, and the doctor said, Miss Marshall, uh, actually, she called the doctor, and the doctor said, uh, I need you back immediately. We found cancer. And, um, and, and that just kind of really takes effect on you. And, and, uh, but there was something in my spirit that was settled this whole time. I knew that God has got it all under control. We, uh, he, this was on Friday. He said, I, I need you back here immediately. We flew her back, and she, uh, we went to the doctor on Monday. Uh, seven days, six days, six or seven days later, they did surgery. Um, but when they found the cancer, the breast cancer, it was uh, nine millimeters in size. I prayed for her one night before uh, she went and had this surgery. And the doctor, when he came out, Brother Gidrose was standing there. He said, we got clean edges. And he said, it has reduced, or he said, it was 0.7 millimeters in size. That was a 900% reduction. Somebody says, oh, couldn't have God healed? Oh, yes, God healed. But you see what happens. Sometimes we get to this place where if I don't see something happen, it's really not a miracle. Is that true? So if I don't see it, then, then it's not a miracle. Oh, it was a mistake somewhere. No, now I can say that what God reduced from a 9 millimeter to 0.7 over 900% reduction. Am I, am I making sense at all here today that the king always has another move? Oh, could, could we have avoided it? I, 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 that would have been perfect. But I, as we were praying, I said, God, whatever you do, I'm asking you to give us the grace to walk down the path. You see, when you've had a word from heaven, you need to stand on that word like you have never stood on the word of God before. 
we, we, we're, we're going back this next week for a, a follow-up. This has been two years now. She has to go in every six months. And every six months, they'd look at us and tell her, everything is okay. You don't have cancer. But that, that's not the end of the story. What they said, it was a triple, triple negative, which means there is no cure for it. They, they said the chemo and all of that other stuff, it wouldn't have helped her anyway. I said, well, thank you, God. The king always has another move. How are they increased which trouble me? Many there be which say of my soul, there is no help for him in God. I know I quoted it a moment ago. But thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me, my glory and the lifter of my head. Come on, he will lift you up above the shadows when everything around you seems to pulverize you. The king always has another move. It's standing on the word of God. It's saying, God, I know what you have promised me. Uh, it, it, David walks out into battle. And David goes to see this giant. But... You, but you've got to go back a little bit. And, and uh, he's out in the field watching his sheep. And, and uh, Samuel says, I'm fixing to anoint a new king. And he goes to Jesse and he says, uh, uh, do you have, where are your sons? And they bring the sons of Jesse. And he said, nope, that's not him. Do you have any more? And, and uh, David comes up and he, he anoints him. He said, that's the next king. And, and, uh, but he has to go back out in the field watching the sheep. But there comes a day when, when Jesse said, David, I want you to take some food to your brothers. And David goes down there and he sees this big Goliath a big giant man mocking the children of Israel and something stirred up inside of David and he, he said who is this uncircumcised Philistine and he said uh, they, they said well he's, he's, uh, he's, he's threatening to kill everybody so they're all taking Prozac back in the tent somewhere and, and David said is there not a cause Oh, come on, I'm preaching to some people. Listen, it, it's not time to wobble or waffle. It's time to stand on the word of God saying, I know God is going to pull me through. I know God is in control of my situation. I, I will stand upon the word of God. David walks out on the battlefield and he says, you come to me with a sword and a shield, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. In other words, he said, you've got a shield and a sword. You can stick me through with a spear and put me like a pig on a spit. But if I had, if I had a word, from God that I'm going to be king and I'm not yet king you cannot harm me Oh, come on. Did somebody hear that? Listen, David said, you can't do anything to me because I've got a word from God that I am going to be king Daniel, how are you doing down in the lion's den? Actually, the lions were in Daniel's den, if you will. But Daniel looks up and he said, I'm here, O king. I'm, everything is all right. He gets down there. This is my ADD mind. He says, you can chew on me like a Mr. Gumby figure, but you cannot harm me because I've had a word from God that one day that I'm going to live to be the age of my old man. And I'm not an old man yet. You cannot harm me. Some of you need to hear me today. You need to square your shoulders back and say, cancer, you cannot harm me. Family problems, you cannot harm me. Sickness, you cannot harm me. Because I've had a word from God that God has going to do what he said he would do. The king always has another move. Come on, somebody clap your hands to Jesus. <laughs> Oh, Peter didn't walk on water. Peter, Jesus, is that you? Yeah, that's me, Peter. If it really is you, bid me to come to you. And Jesus said, come on, Peter, it is really me. Peter did not walk on water. He walked on the word of God. So you, you've got to learn how to walk on the word. You've got to learn how to walk on what God says is going to happen. God, I do not live for you by emotion. I live for you by what I know. I live for you by knowing that you are king, that you have created everything, that you have all power, that you have all authority. And God, you said to me that you would give me power. If the po Come on, somebody, hear me. That the power, the same power that is in us is in Christ Jesus. Come on, this is not a name it, claim it, blab it, and grab it. But this is walking on the word of God, that I am a child of God. His royal blood flows through my vein. And I, who is wretched and poor, now can sing, thank God I'm a child of the king. The king always has another move. But our problem is we've got to be a little radical. Radical, radical, radical. That word, it, it, it's all over the news all the time. Radical, radical, radical. It's time some apostolic Holy Ghost filled people say, I'm going to start being radical. 
Listen, if I can lay hands on the sick, they will recover. I don't even have to lay hands on them. I can speak to that mountain and it's going to move, move. There needs to be something that rises up inside of us. Come on, we've we've got to start living in that dimension of faith. We've got to start living in that dimension where I can walk up to somebody in H-E-B and lay hands on them and God fill them with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Brother Marshall, how many times have you done that? Oh, I have done that before, honey. I'm telling you, God is still able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think. I've been sitting in a restaurant right here in San Antonio A couple comes, they're walking, the Lord spoke to me. And uh, they stopped and spoke to the pastor we were with. And uh, and as they're walking up, and the pastor introduces them to me. And I said, hi, how are you doing? I said, the Lord spoke to me as you were walking up. I said, you want children? They just kind of looked at me. And I I said, you're wanting children. And uh, I said, the Lord's going to give you a child. He said, well, if the Lord gives me a child, we'll be in church. One month later, I get a phone call. Brother Marshall, guess who was in church? Yeah. Uh, Guess what? They're pregnant. Yeah. Hallelujah. I knew it. That's the way the Lord works. It's not about me. It's all about him. I could take you to, I could take you to Willis, Texas, started praying for a lady. I didn't know what fibromyalgia was. I still don't know what it was. I don't want to look it up. I'm not interested. I just had heard the word and the Lord brought that word back to my mind. I began to pray for her. She went home and looked it up on the she Googled Mr. Google, some of our greatest friend, you know. And she Googled it and found out everything she had been having for the last several years. That was what it was. She goes to the vitamin store. Would you please give me some vitamins for fibromyalgia? The lady says. Okay, pulls all these things down, and she said, wow, that's a whole lot of stuff, very expensive. And she said, "Uh, if you could just pick two or three, and the lady at the vitamin store said, why are you doing that? She said, last night at church, a preacher uh, went to pray for me, and he said something about fibromyalgia. He diagnosed me with fibromyalgia, and I don't even know I had it, but that's what's been going on. The lady put all the vitamins back. She said, ma'am, I'm not selling you one thing. She said, because you've already been healed. You need to go home and thank God for your healing. That's a rank center. Somebody needs to hear me today. The king always has another move. God has not forgotten you. God knows where you're at. God knows who you are. You just got to be radical. Name and go wash seven times. Comes up six times. This ain't happening. It's not about what you want. It's about being obedient to the word of God. He comes up seven times and he is completely healed. He is made whole. You need to just thank God that he knows who you are and knows where you're at. (laughs) There's people all across this building that the Lord... I'm I'm just, I'm a little overwhelmed right now. There was a couple standing right up here during the worship service. I didn't look at who you are. I don't know anything. You were standing right over here. Who was it? Was it y'all? Was it you? Sir, and and your wife, would you stand up, please? Have a word from heaven for you. God has not forgotten you. He knows exactly who you are. He knows the pain you've been through and the turmoil. And God is going to restore unto you greater things than you could have ever imagined. What you thought you lost, God is going to restore even greater. Lift your hands to heaven right now. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Come on, lift your voice to heaven all across this building. Hey, hey, Come on, come on, come on, come on, lift your voice. There's fixing to be a release in the Holy Ghost. Come on, I don't need to come and call you out. I'm going to minister to a few people. But there's fixing to be a release of the Holy Ghost all across this congregation. There's fixing to be a release of the Holy Ghost all across this building. Whatever you need, whatever your problem, whatever your situation, God is able to do what he said he would do. Sickness is fixing to be healed all across. Come on, I feel a release of the Holy Ghost. I feel a release fixing to happen. Hallelujah. Come on, plug into it. Come on, don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. In Jesus' name, can I pray for you? Hallelujah. Lift your hands to heaven, everybody in this place. In the name of Jesus. Is this your husband? Can I pray for you? I want to stay here.
the name of Jesus. God, I'm asking you to touch my right now in Jesus name come on the Lord's doing something in this building come on we've got to we've got to move with the Holy Ghost right now he la da ba I'm going to say that publicly. Listen, listen to me. They've been praying for a harvest. I, I don't know who they are. I don't know anything. And the Lord just, I, I normally don't say things in the mic. I, I just talk to people individually. But the Lord spoke to me. And you're going to see your harvest. You're going to see it start this week. You mark it down. This week, you're going to start seeing a greater increase in the harvest. God is going to start showing you that he is adding to the harvest. Now, when I think souls, that, that, when I think harvest, that's what I think. And, and, and obviously, that's, that, that's how you're feeling the same way. But God, this week, God is going to start adding to that harvest right now by the power of the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name if you need healing in your body come quickly come quickly I don't have time to make it to everybody I, I've, I've already been up here probably about 40 minutes 30 minutes 40 minutes somewhere in that area quickly come quickly I'm going to minister to some people but God is fixing to release healing right now God is going to release healing you see pastor I, I, I I, I, I would love to take the time and just go to individuals, but, but right now, would you just lift your hands, everybody in this place?